It's been a while since we've caught up to what Bruce Wayne and Alfred have been up to in their search for Dr. Chandra Kin solving Jack, Jack Drake and their kidnappers. So this time, we are returning to their storyline as the Shadow of the Bat falls on the UK with Shadow of the Bat, issues number 21, 22, and 23. These issues are written by Alan Grant with art by Brett Blevins, coloring by Adrian Roy, lettering by Todd Klein, and inking on issues 22 and 23 by Steve George. We open on London, and on London Bridge in particular, but we do not open on Bruce, rather on Hood, a London costume vigilante who we see taking down some cigarette smugglers, before berating them because they, the smugglers, act like smuggling to get around taxes is a victimless crime, before citing how this takes money out of the coffers of the NHS, which adds a bit of a bummer because this is a the lack of funding of the NHS is a topical issue almost 30 years later. In any case, as Hood sends up the Hood signal to alert the Met to come pick up these goons, the Bat signal goes up in response. Hood goes to meet Batman, who is literally propping himself up on a post in order to stay upright. Batman needs intel from MI5 and pays with it with some intel of his own on an incoming cocaine shipment. Alfred helps Bruce to clear out before the hood doubles back. Elsewhere, Benedict Asp meets with a couple of KGB or ex-KGB agents who he takes down to the dungeon to see Shonda and Jack. We also get the reveal of Asp's interest in Shonda. He has known her since childhood and he also knows that she is a metahuman with powers mapping to those of, like, the healing machine from Babylon 5, which he can, which Asp has the ability to heighten. The healing machine being, for those who haven't seen that episode, it's a thing that can sap the life force from one thing and give it to another. Bruce and Alfred return to their hotel room, and as Hood breaks into MI5, Bruce does his physical therapy and goes over what we learned earlier in the issue with the added detail of MI5 showing up on a whole lot of dead ends related to kin solving. MI5 and Benedict Asp, that is. Bruce then takes a nap and dreams of the women in his life before Alfred wakes him for the meeting with Hood. We then go to a demonstration of Chandra's healing powers, making explicit what has previously been stated, and that Asp has a device that lets him store the harmful energies and release them on a target. Hood delivers the intel to Alfred, who is disguised as Batman, as Bruce's back wouldn't let them pull off that trick again. Alfred gives Bruce the file as he continues his physical therapy, and Alfred brings up that Asp has purchased a lordship and will be holding the annual hunt ball at the manor, so Bruce Wayne will be there incognito. The second issue of our story opens with Alfred and Bruce driving to Monkley, as Alfred bemoans the Official Secrets Act and the lack of an equivalent of the American Freedom of Information Act. Bruce is putting the finishing touches of his disguise on as they see some animal rights activists interfering in a fox hunt. The person holding the hunt decides to give the bloody peasant a thrashing only for Bruce to interfere under his cover of Sir Hebbingford Gray, who gives the upper class twits a jolly good thrashing. As Bruce gets into the car, he tells Alfred he recognized a protester. George Cross, as Hood. Now I really wish Hood had a solo book, like from DC UK or something. Back at Monkley Hall, Asp and Yuri have been continuing their tests on Dr. Kin solving. Asp is telling her that he's developed a way to store her healing energy, which we know is a lie, and which is implied that she knows as well, based on his threats. Upstairs, Asp meets with Hemingford Gray, and Bruce takes the opportunity to plant a bug in Asp's study. Down in the basement, Yuri has an updated model of psychic helmet based on various Soviet experimental tech that lets them kill remotely using Dr. Kin solving stored psychic energy. Back in town, Bruce goes for a walk as the bug is currently only getting static, and in the process, no look catches an errant cricket ball flying at his head. The nice thing about his cover story of having him been up a big game hunter from darkest Africa, or as he said, as he puts it, uh, or been on traveling the world and got his injury hunting the most, um, various super dangerous wild animals, which 
probably also include some weird experimental stuff because this is the DC comics and Dr. Savannah's out there. Um, ends up um, giving it a, a justification for why even with his injury and his limp, he's able to totally just catch this cricket ball knocked full tilt, more or less out of nowhere. Elsewhere, George Cross sees two MI5 agents uh, disembarking from a helicopter at Monkley Hall. And at this point, we get Alfred's side of the phone conversation from Robin issue number one, giving a little context for where we're at with Alfred and Bruce during that conversation. The MI5 agents meet with Asp in their study, and finally Bruce gets some information. MI5 was set off by the theft of Asp's file. They brought the rest of the money, and they want the demonstration of Asp's weapon tonight. That night, Asp carries out his demonstration, killing a whole bunch of people in the village. However, they do the demonstration upstairs, which means Bruce, as Grey, sees Chandra and breaks cover in front of her and Asp. Thankfully, though, Bruce doesn't see it that way. Um, though, though, I should say, thankfully, though, Bruce doesn't see it that way, Dr. Kinsolving doesn't recognize him through all the makeup. Bruce, as Grey, then gets thrown out of the party by Asp's goons and is specifically is hauled off by the twits from the fox hunt. Yuri and one of the one of Asp's goons go to retrieve the bodies of two of the victims for autopsies, while the Hood sees the aftermath of all of this and tails the two. The twits take on uh, Wayne and or take Wayne and Gray off to rough him up, only to once again get knocked out. This time with the help of some gadgets that Harold built into his cane, Bruce's canes, before Bruce falls after Chandra and Asp. Man, Bruce beating the crap out of some posh douchebags never gets old. Bruce almost catches up, but Hood runs into some trouble and sends up a flare, and as Bruce wavers, he sees a bat, which makes up his mind. My mental soundtrack has a subdued version of the Batman fanfare when uh, Bruce sees the bat. Asp directs his MI5 contacts to find Yuri so they can pack up before ripping away Jack Drake's oxygen and knocking Chandra out with a suitcase. Bruce and Hood take out the MI5 goons, and Bruce reaches Jack just in time. Asp flees in the helicopter, and Bruce rejoins Hood after calling for help. Hood tells them that everyone in Monkley is dead. Bruce rushes to find Alfred and discovers that Alfred survived by going for a walk. Now, that walk was to figure out how to tell for well, Alfred to figure out how to tell Bruce about Jean Paul, but Alfred doesn't bring that part up. I absolutely love this moment here though. As they prepare to leave, Alfred tell Alfred is told by Hood to let Gray know that it was an honor to work with Batman. Who Hood thinks that this is was a British emigre, so the cover still worked, I guess. Elsewhere, Bruce is consumed with grief, thinking that the woman he loves has turned evil and swears to the dead of Monkley to bring their killers to justice. Like some, some dance, dance macabre, the, the Lord's, Lord's court, court parties on, on while the village, the village dies. dies. What was it Alfred, Alfred said? said? And the Lords no longer protect their people. The curse of the bat, no longer able to protect my people. I can't believe Chandra would do this. And yet, we took great care to disguise what was really going on, Asp said, meaning him and Chandra. His willing partner, Chandra claimed. A willing partner in a scheme that's killed dozens of innocent people. For most of my life, being the Batman sustained me. The night and my mission were all I needed. When that was taken from me, I allowed myself the emotions I denied all these years. I fell in love. And now I feel cold as it all leeches away, running out of me like water from a sieve. I'm not a man to cry, but I know why people do. I swear on the lives of every innocent who died tonight. I swear on the feelings that Chandra betrayed. I will find the woman I loved and bring her to justice. This is a great little storyline, upping the stakes for this part of the story with a further reason why Bruce and Alfred need to find Dr. Kin solving beyond just 
her being Bruce's love interest and also needing to save Tim's dad. Additionally, I desperately wish more writers had done more with Hood. I understand why Grant Morrison's Batman of, or Batman of Many Nations and Batman Incorporated used Knight and Squire as their heroes from the UK, but I absolutely wish they'd used Hood instead because I liked that tack with the with the character and how he works, um, and how and how different he is in a lot of respects from Bruce. And I got cut off there by phone audio. So let's record that again. This is a great little storyline, and it really ups the stakes for this part of the story, setting up a reason for why Bruce is looking for Dr. Kinsolving and for uh, Jack Drake beyond he's in love with Dr. Kinsolving and Jack is Tim's dad. Also, I wish more writers had done more with Hood in the in following years of Batman comics. I understand why Grant Morrison picked Knight and Squire for the Batman of Many Nations and for Batman Incorporated, but I really wish they'd used Hood instead, or in it, or possibly used Hood for Batman Incorporated because of Bruce having worked with him in the past and and Hood's different take on is vigilantism. Next month, we return to the crusade as Asbat has his first encounter with Catwoman. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that. 